Warning! The following gameplay video was created by a scrub. If scrub gameplay disturbs you, stop the video now. Good day! We're playing Ring of Red. <clears throat> well, I'm playing Ring of Red. Maybe you are too, while you're watching this. I don't know. Well, Ryoko does not have much to do or any places to go, so let's have her recover. Get those squads up. I'm playing this... Well, of course I'm playing it live, but I'm also recording commentary live. For the first time. So, how am I going to deal with certain issues such as... Um, all the editing that I usually do to speed this up. Well, because my editing is going to happen in a consistent sort of way, which is to say any time one of those skill animations or scouting animations goes through, um, it's, it's pretty easy for me to just stay quiet when those things happen. That's my plan, anyway. So, Weisegger. Uh, I am actually not sure where to put him right now. <clears throat> he could use the experience from getting a kill for sure. So I guess I'll do that. Even though these guys are considerably lower level than I am. Oh man, they might throw an APCR shell at me. At short range, yes. Oh right, that's how long it's been. I actually forgot that the whole reason I have these scouts is for illumination shot. Oh well. I guess I deserve that. That's okay, I do have something that I can use which is not bothered so much by uh, those kinds of conditions. Although I am likely to get shot before I get that close. I actually wasn't thinking about the squads, although I guess that did the trick too. It's actually kind of easy to forget that Weisegger can punch as well. And Emilio is also kind of stuck. But that's okay. I'll get everyone unstuck pretty soon. Alright. It looks like... Well, before I move John, I want to make sure... Yeah, so... It'd be great if he could recover at this village, because his squads are also in not very good shape. But he'd get attacked along the way. So it's probably better for him to recover in place. Yep, it's being all aggressive, as opposed to partly aggressive. 
Oh, he attacked and moved, and he still moved again sooner than everyone else. I was not expecting that. Well, he's he's been doing pretty well so far. I mean, he wasn't even that bad right at the start. Story-wise, probably different, but... Alright, so let's get Jun moving. I especially want to get a light AFW forwards as soon as I can. Oh, oh, okay, so that's how it is. What do I actually want to do here? This is going to sound a little bit odd, but I think I want to retreat. And I, I might fire a, sh a shell in hopes of dealing with, I don't know, dealing with the shield. The problem is Ryoko is not really that great at moving backwards. And I'm not moving my soldiers forward to deal some chip damage because um, the enemy still has those shrapnel rounds. I don't think going past 50% will be worthwhile for this. Oh. For once, the quote was correct. He did narrowly escape that. Also, now that I'm at long range, it wouldn't have done much damage anyway. There are a couple of games that I've played where you move on a tactical map and then it becomes some sort of um, sub-game when units collide, but most of the ones I've encountered, uh, once that happens, it's straight up a battle to the death. I don't, I don't know whether this is better or worse than that. I'm, I'm guessing better because a lot of other factors in the game do not really um, respond well to sudden death, uh, like permanent troop loss and other stuff. So, um, Emilio will deal with you. Uh, I don't like moving in a moving a light AFW only one tile, but... Alright, you're gonna move here. That works. Okay. Now... You've been watching this series before. You know what happens when you have two uncontested mechs at short range. And at, at that range they won't be able to use your shrapnel, so... Um, even though medium uh, AFWs are the toughest, and even though... Um, this one is at full health, and there's accuracy problems on my part. I still expect this to go very quickly.
Oh, good. Now I'm gonna wait for another grenade hit to get rid of their shield. That seemed to work. Yeah, you're not going to backpedal out of the range of uh, an anti-AFW, especially not if you're medium. Ooh, that'll throw off their aim a bit. As far as the comparison to shield health versus um, body health, I think I prefer Emilio's style over Ipe's. Ipe shield is very tough. But since Ring of Red loves long battles, um, I prefer stuff that isn't permanently removed so easily. Well, permanently meaning for the rest of the map. That's more experience than I expected. Oh. Um. What do I do? So if I stand here, I'm waiting for over two and a half hours, and how much? The thing is, I don't really have... Oh, okay. I think I might as well get him moving because there are other people who need that tile to be open. Especially Ryoko. Um, hmm. So, how do I handle this now? Ideally, I'd want someone else to go ahead and deal with this. Especially because I don't want him retreating back to this village. When, when does he move in, anyway? Alright, so Ipai and Ayana go first for sure. And actually Ayana can reach him. So I may be able to finish him off before he gets a turn. Alright, I'll give that a try. So what am I looking at here? He's probably going to load... He's probably going to load the shrapnel, and I hope that's the case. Well, actually, no. Um, sorry, I was still thinking about something else. Um, it, it's actually kind of tricky, because if he does load the medics, that means I'll be able to kill his squads without a problem. If he uses smoke shot on me, though, I'm gonna be in trouble. All right, since this is night time, yeah, I'm I'm going to rely on my squads to deal damage. He didn't load any of his special shots. Okay, fine. Um, that that's that's making it easier than I thought it would be. Although, of course, it's still gonna be kind of a pain.
Oh, okay. I won't turn down a chance to concentrate everything on one enemy squad. Unfortunately, I was a little too slow on the draw. That's okay. So the next question is how I'm going to deal with this setup. I'm considering restocking co-op, but during the time it takes to move him back and then forward again probably doesn't justify the damage that I'd deal. If I had two op squads, I'd probably go for it just because it was so bursty. I actually don't mind these anti-soldier shots. Anything that hits my stronger soldiers is something that I could almost ignore. Okay, let's get this up to 50. Now if this game were more popular, people probably would have dug through the files to get the proper numbers by now on how increasing accuracy affects the damage of your anti-soldier shots. And probably a bunch of other formula as well. Now my accuracy from here is not great, so I don't know if a creeping fire will finish off that recon. I'll probably have to try it though. Yeah, I'll definitely need to try it. I was about to have my squads retreat, but that wouldn't save them from a snipe anyway. Well, this will definitely deal with the medics, at least. Oh yeah, let's get rid of their special shells, maybe. Who's, who says Kaiho's the only one who can dual wield cannons? Oh wow, that was more damage than I thought. Guess their armor wasn't that great. Okay, now I'll pull them back, because I don't need to take any more shots. Well, actually never mind. I prefer that to taking another an AFW shot. Not that they have time to do it anyway. Can he actually move? Yes, um, that would be preferable. If I can move him over here, that'll get him out of the way of a lot of things as well. So who needs this tile? Um, as far as I can tell, no one, so this'll work. And Ipe, of course... No, wait, no. Ayana actually needs that tile. Okay, this, this is probably the first kind of tricky move that I have to deal with. But I'm okay with having Kinsato only move two tiles forward. Well, you were kind of helping him before a lot of us had died as well, and that that seemed like a good idea.
All right. So what am I gonna throw out here? It is night time, so I could use the 100% accuracy of special shells. On the other hand, the, the others hit so hard that I might not even need them. It's actually kind of a tough one. But I have so many shells in stock that I might as well go with this. I don't think I need E-Wire in this battle. So you've probably noticed that I haven't really thought of any big overarching plans yet for my current situation. So I'll, I'll tell you what I have in mind for the bigger picture. Which is, I'd like for, as soon as this thing is dealt with, I'd like for my uh, light AFWs to move forward a fair bit. Huh, 15 from long range? That That's better than I expected from a supply squad. Anyway, um, since, since both of the light AFWs were in the other party, they appeared kind of in back, which was very nice for the pincer, but not so nice for what I plan to do next. And it feels very odd for me to do something like that, because... Oh yeah, they're never going to be able to hit me now. They're going to hit me the moment they fire. Oh! Okay, yeah. I, I don't even need to shoot again. <laughs> but but that isn't that's just basic tactics. That isn't really a grand master plan, I'd say. What I have ahead of me is a split, and one of the directions is towards the enemy base, the other is sort of a side path towards a village that I'd like to take. And since things are going to be crowded along these lines... By the way, this is a bridge, this is a river tile, not a road tile. And this is also a river tile. So to get onto this bridge, you have to cross a river. I, I don't think that was intentional on the part of the map designers, but it's how things end, uh, ended up. I find it very odd. Well, um... I think the next step is to lure this guy forward and crush him before he can move back. Then I move forward and take the, this village. And to do that, I'll definitely need a couple of people who can move fast. Not necessarily Kinsato or Jun, though. I think Ipe would do fine as well. Emilio also, but he's so far in the back that pushing him to the front in this uh, narrow passageway would be a lot of trouble and would take a lot of time. So, do I move him onto the river? Would the gain in positioning be worth the very long time I'd have to, to wait? Well, considering where he is and um, how much more of a useful position this is, I think I'm gonna go for it. Especially because it'll put him out of the way of some of the others. Also, I don't think it... Okay, well, it is a pretty heavy delay, yes. But I don't actually need him to move for a little while. Also, yeah, where he can move from there is makes the move worth it, I think. He can't do anything, which is also a problem. Ugh. 
Ring of Red. I hope you, you're really good at navigating roads. It's more difficult than it looks. He can't even move on to this woods over here. I think I can afford to put him on a river as well because there isn't actually anything around here that's already stripped of squads and needs a follow-up, so I can afford to have him wait for a while. Now this is a little awkward. The thing is if... oh, right, I actually had a plan for this. The reason that I'm a little hesitant is because it's kind of easy for John in particular to take one move to the side and then just never get into a battle again because... Well, he takes a long time to get another turn. And because of that, when 905 comes along, I need to make sure that this tile here is free. Because his attack is, of course, very useful, and I don't want to lose it just due to um, badly handling my movement. So, where... So... John wants this tile, and Kinsado wants that tile. So, uh, when John, when it's John's turn, I want to check to see whether he recovers before John does. It's definitely possible. He he's very fast. Does anyone want this tile? Yeah, Ryoko does. Um, well, that's awkward. Do I have to put her on a river too, or woods, which is actually a worse tile because it has fewer useful places to move to from here? Than from here, I mean. <sighs> oh well. Actually, you know what? My plan overall was to have these guys sort of slow down and let the frontliners take a space, so I guess I'll just go with it. That is a long delay, though. So, 840 versus 905. Okay, yeah, that'll be fine. I doubt he'll actually. I doubt he will get stuck there. And actually, there's a bonus of sorts in that while he's occupied, occupying the title. No one else who might have a solar recovery could take it through a mistake on my part. So that's pretty good. And Weisegger is actually okay for a place to go. Um, where does he want to go? Over here. So yeah, taking him off the river seems like a good move. Yeah, so that works. Now, which way do I want him to go? If I put him here, he's going to draw an at Well, actually, he's going to draw an attack whichever way I go. So what range do I want that to happen in? Well, short range is best for him, but I also need to consider where the follow attacks are going to come from. Um, so if he goes here, then Weisegger can move forward and follow up easily. The only thing is, um, that's going to take up a space that other people might want, but actually looking at it, it's not that big a deal. So this looks good. I actually think I might be making better decisions now that I'm sort of talking about it as I go. And John is guaranteed to move out of the way by the time John's turn is next.
Yeah, I think that's an interesting observation because when when Weisegger was first uh, assigned his real mission, he was like, Grr, revenge, arg! And now that's not so much the case. Pretty neat. So when is this guy going to move? So probably next. I'd be very surprised if he didn't. I mean, you know, light F AFW and all. But where do I want him to go? I'd actually prefer if this guy went forward to attack Jun, and he might not if I put Ipe in the village. So I'm gonna... That's gonna get in the way of my follow-up with Weisiger, though. Do I actually have to have him stand by? I think that actually might be the best idea, because then whenever I'm ready to have him take the village, I can just do that. So... Actually, just having him stand by on the river is still not that bad. Well, I guess it's a multiplier, and standing by is a low base delay, so... Yeah. Yeah, that works. Smoke shot. Okay, that's actually rather bad news. And these guys have rapid fire. Hmm. Well, adhesive mine isn't going to do anything for me, and... I don't think I'm going to need cleanup because... Well... I'm not getting into close combat with Jun. I mean, actually, I take that back. It is sometimes tempting because Recon does great damage against other soldiers in close combat, but I just have to kind of remember to not do that and I'll be okay. Also, despite having uh, rapid fire, the enemy is not that scary because they're a mixed group. Their smoke shells are going to be the main problem. So, let's look at the positioning. Um, they're versus AFW shots are going to target my soldiers. I'd rather not eat a full strength rapid fire, but... But I think I'll have to go with this. Actually, should I aim weapon these guys? They're fully loaded, it might be a good precaution. And I don't think they have repair, so let's try it. Given the range and my base accuracy, it should be it it should have a pretty good chance of working. Yeah, nothing like unloading the enemy after they've just fully loaded. Although I guess the effect is less uh, against a light AFW, still. Oh, that was less damage than I thought. The reason I thought it would be more is that... Well, I think I've showed you enemy soldier stats before. They tend to have really good base attack power. Actually, is the enemy moving backwards? I think they might be. It's tough to tell, but I'll... Once there's a little break in all this skill throwing... Dang it, I was talking during the skill, so I have to let it play at uh, normal speed. And no, they're not moving backwards. That's good. So this is going pretty well. 
Um, they haven't thrown out a smoke shot yet. And... Wow, they actually move forward into CC. When their squad moves forward, they'll wish they hadn't done that, even though it's another rapid fire. The smoke shot barely even count, or, well, it, it does count, but it's barely going to affect things now. So, do I want to dodge the rapid fire? And if so, how? Um... Yeah, I'm gonna do it this way. It's kind of a shame because um, the re my recon will do a lot of damage when they get a shot in, but... Oh yeah, Jun's aim is actually not that bad. Yep, I actually didn't... I did not even need to worry. And now to pull both of you back because... Yeah, that'll make things nice and smooth when I decide to recover. So, should I use a dodge here? I'm gonna say no, and the reason that I'm saying no is that there aren't any other enemies nearby who could follow up on Jun. Also, that was the enemy's attack. If it was me attacking, and the enemy was going to move uh, next, then I would consider using a dodge here. Oh wow, yeah, it's gonna take them forever to correct their aim after that. Or they could just, um, not bother. That works for me. Oh, the smoke shell must have just cleared up. Alright, I, I think that's one of the best encounters I've had using Jun in quite a, a long time. I, I could not reasonably ask for anything better.